Well, hello, crew. I am making this video kind of uh, as a, a wrap up of the last five years. And uh, I'm kind of updating y'all as to where I am, how the channel's going, what I think the future holds, what my current thoughts are, that kind of thing. So uh, I'm going to be recording this over a, a couple days in October or a few days as I travel around the, the Southwest. Right now I'm in Utah and uh, yeah, I'm going to put some thoughts together and and uh, kind of show you where I am after five years, over 500 videos and uh, about five years of producing content. Let's see where we are. So uh, why did I start making videos on this channel uh, in the first place? And there are a handful of reasons. There are a few things that I'm passionate about. Uh, I don't have a close relationship with my daughter or her two children or my late daughter's uh, daughter either, my grand grandchild, Violet. Um, my three grandchildren are not getting the grandpa on the farm time that I wish they were. And I'm not able to share things with my daughter. She's not interested at this point and has not been thus far in her life. And I kind of want to do that parenting pass on information kind of thing. And so they are a big reason that I'm doing this. I have some distant cousins in uh, Georgia and some cousins, distant cousins in uh, California. And I just kind of think, hey, you know, I wish I had something from my old uncle, uh, grandpa, uh, dad, just kind of passing on some wisdom and uh, have it all in one place where I could sit down for a few days and do a marathon and eh, kind of see what kind of person they were. So that's one reason that I'm doing this. Uh, another reason is that I am passionate about liberty. I'm passionate about freedom. And uh, I just, I... But I love it. I, I it's it's become my life's passion uh, for the last fifteen years or so. I first read Atlas Shrugged when I was uh, oh, I think just just under twenty years old, somewhere right in there, and uh, that that sparked an interest. And then I've just casually been interested since then. Uh, and then in the two thousand seven uh, Ron Paul presidential efforts that I put. And yeah, I know the election was in 2008, but 2007 was when most of what I was doing happened. Uh, then when I saw what happened and I saw how dirty and corrupt politics were, I, uh, eh, I became seriously interested in, in the libertarian movement at that point and learning more about it and such. So after doing that for many, many years, uh, I kind of thought, hey, I now spent a lot of thousands of hours looking into things, researching things, uh, casually looking at things, and I know a few things that I would like to share with others and perhaps do it in a in a way that I, I don't think libertarians had thought of before, and that is doing it in a non-condescending kind of way, in a in a polite, fun, respectful way, and speaking to people who haven't been, uh, I don't know, exposed to these kind of thoughts and doing it in a in a nice way. And so I thought that could be of some use. Um, another area of interest of mine is helping men become better, stronger, uh, just kind of figuring out who they are uh, as a person, and then more so the hard skills. Uh, how do you actually go out and be a man? How do you be honest? And, and how do you turn a wrench? And how do you start a business and run it well. And that's another big interest of mine is helping small entrepreneurs go through all the go through all the hurdles and, and make it as an entrepreneur. So I love mentoring. Uh, and so this channel is kind of a way to combine all of those things and uh, give people a hand. And you know I mentioned that I'm I'm over 500 videos and over five years into this project. And uh, I have less than 650 viewers or subscribers. Um, and that's in the YouTube world. That's what the, the YouTubers look at. How many subs do I have? And you don't really count unless you have 10,000 or 100,000 or a million or 5 million or whatever. Like those are kind of the, the benchmark numbers. And some people will start out small and, and within a few days or weeks or months, 
will end up having hundreds of thousands or a million subscribers. And my subscribers are <laughs> so much more treasured <laughs> because there aren't many of you. And uh, I really appreciate you. I've hoped to grow numbers much larger, and I haven't. And again, that's the free market speaking. Um, I have been out there. I've had some great boosts. Uh, Patrick Smith interviewing me and, and promoting my show on his show. Thank you, Patrick of Disenthrall, for doing that. Uh, Keith Knight uh, of Don't Tread on Anyone. Uh, big thanks to him for having me on his show and, and promoting me. Same thing with James Freeman uh, for promoting me on his, his channel. And after all of those people helping me, and another friend, Nathan, giving me great advice on videos, which anything that I've done that's halfway decent, yeah, probably his advice. Kaysen helping me with, with the technical aspects of it. And after all of this, what I have to show is a channel that isn't working. You know, by any popular measure, it isn't working. Um, it would probably be easier for me to have individual relationships with the people who are actually being helped by it. And so th these are some of the things that I'm thinking about as I wonder, is it worth going on? Um, and so I look about this, speaking of entrepreneurialism, uh, small business, I look at it from that perspective. If this channel was a business, I would have shot it and thrown it over the cliff years ago. You know, you give it a good go, you examine it. What am I doing wrong? How can I make it better? What are the measures of success? And you, you, you do it, and you, if it doesn't work and you're just not getting customers, you say, well, maybe my marketing is wrong. Okay, so you market better, and then you're still not getting customers. And you think, well, maybe I can do this or that or the other thing. And if you, you do everything you can think of and you still are not getting customers, time to shut the doors. Time to quit blowing your own money and time and energy and go on to something that you'd really be good at. So these are the temptations that I have. I am kind of held back because I really enjoy making videos and sharing my knowledge. I'm, I've learned a lot about it. Uh, yeah, I'm still a rank amateur, uh, not highly skilled, as you can tell from the quality of the videos, but I've learned a ton and it's, it's been exciting and it's been fun and I enjoy producing content. So those are some of the, some of the things that I'm, I'm tossing around in my brain. And maybe we should chat also some about what I've learned over the years of thinking about voluntarism, libertarianism, humanitarianism, stoicism. Uh, so I'm going to have a few parts of this video that we'll, we'll talk about that coming soon. Another thing I think about is uh, pragmatic versus uh, idealistic or uh, what's the what's the stoic best move there? I don't know. Um, I kind of, I, on the one hand, I think, you know, just do the right thing. I think the stoics would say it doesn't really matter if it's pragmatic or not. Um, if the right thing to do is to do a certain thing, then do that certain thing. And don't worry about whether or not it's going to work out. Just do that thing. Your job as a human is to, I don't know, do the, do the right thing at the right time. Uh, just be a, be a good, good person doing the right thing. And, and I really, I struggle with this because from a pragmatic standpoint, I don't think we should ignore that. I think in business, I look at something and I say, hey, what are the, uh, what, what do we do to achieve this goal? And whatever that is, let's go do that, as long as it's ethical, as long as it's a moral good thing to do. And so I don't know where, I don't know where that line is. If I look pragmatically at, at my channel, uh, my, my YouTube Odyssey channels, and I look at the number of people who consistently get any value out of what I do, and, and by the way, thanks to all of you who just click a like on there and don't really listen. <laughs> I appreciate that support, but I, I don't know if maybe two or three or five people, each video I put out really truly listen to it and care, and it's of interest to them. Uh, and I'm by no means the the be all end all. I don't know that it's I don't know that it's worth watching my videos. Um, I think it is obviously, but uh, 
I don't know. Um, and so this is what this is what I really struggle with is it, it takes so much work to do each video. Now, of course, right now I'm out on a ATV and on a walkabout. I'm at the the foot mountains, foot hills, foot cliffs, or whatever of uh, near Dinosaur National Monument in Vernal, Utah, and uh, I'm just having a great old time out here. And I pull over and I grab the phone and I hit record and, and I chit chat a little bit. And yeah, that part's not hard, but it's going back to the hotel and then saving this file under the correct file and then getting together all the pieces and parts of this video and fixing the audio and all that stuff that videographers, YouTubers do. Um, and, you know, I think I've given it a pretty good solid shot and it's not like I'm getting that widespread, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm changing the lives of 50 people a year and therefore it's worth it, you know, one a week. Um, it's, that's not the case. Like luckily, lucky if it's one a year that I've actually impacted a person who would say that, you know what, their, their life is way better because of, uh, shepherd things existing. So how much effort is it worth putting into, uh, as I go forward? And, and I don't know the correct answer to that. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's worth, worth it. If there's, if, you know, some people might say, well, you know, it matters to that one uh, what do you call it? The starfish. If you throw it back in the ocean, well, to that one, it mattered. So if, if I can help a person or two, does that make it worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of work? Or should I just say, Hey, um, the free market has spoken. I do trust the free market. The free market is not really excited about my content <laughs> and, uh, it's just, it's not well enough done. And, uh, the, the, the points aren't interesting enough or, unique enough or funny enough or sexy enough or cute puppyish or intelligent or whatever it is, their free market is speaking. And by the way, thanks to the few of you who, unlike the free market, uh, kind of like it. Um, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's real cool. Thank you. Big time. You're, uh, you're what's kept me going so far. So we'll see if I decide to keep going or not. Um, I, I don't know. What do you think about this? Is it, is it worth the effort? How, how many hours of effort is it worth it to reach one new person or to help somebody who's been in the, the humanitarian movement for a while to say, oh, you know what? That's an interesting new thought. I hadn't thought of that. Um, is it worth two hours of my work each time that happens? Is it worth 20 hours? Is it worth 200? Is it worth 2000? There's gotta be a, there's gotta be a formula, uh, to, to kind of help a Help a dude figure out whether or not it's worth it to do this. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, not sure where I'll go from here. And kind of continuing on this uh, thought of stoicism, uh, pragmatism. Are they one and the same? Are they different? Do they oppose each other, etc.? You know, I think of the scenario of a a person who had a, a principle, and let's say that they were a a very stoic thinking kind of person. And uh, they were they were thinking about it, and one of the things they decided that they were going to have as a a principle that they would live by would be that they do not run from grizzly bears. Um, if they are in a place where they have every right to be as a as a critter on this earth, they have a right to be there just because some angry grizzly doesn't want them there is running at them. They are not going to move. That's a principle. And if they're looking at the means rather than the ends, and that's their highest value, then I guess the best move for them, if that grizzly comes charging at them, would be to say, no, I, I don't really care if I live or die. I'm going to do the right thing right now. And the right thing is not retreating from the grizzly. And then they die. But that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if their highest value was sticking to that principle of not running from a grizzly. On the other hand, some of us think that we kind of want to live also. That's kind of a, a cool part of life is living. And uh, running from a grizzly, somehow finding a, a way to get away, maybe that's worth giving up the principle of not running away from big old critters that come after you. Um, I don't know. Okay, and let's take this another step further. If, uh, if things are going to be what they're going to be, thinking about stoicism and continuing on this vein. If things are going to be what they're going to be, and realistically, 
probably, if we're looking at probabilities, there's a real good chance that governments will continue to exist for the rest of my life. And I'm, I think, two-thirds of the way through my life. So I've got another 10 to 30 years, I'm guessing. Uh, the actuaries say 26 years, but yeah, somewhere in there. Hopefully it's on the lower end. But that's what I've got left. And for that amount of time, will there be governments in the world? I think that if I was a betting guy, I would say yes. Now I'm going to work to I'm going to work to have peace, but I think the opposite is more likely to be true. I think there will be governments in the world. So if there're going to be governments in the world and I had a choice, I'm not going to take any action toward it at this point of the conversation. I'm not going to take any action. I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to sign petitions for this or that or the other thing, even if my buddies really, really want it and it's important. Not going to do that. Not going to be involved. But if I had my druthers, would I rather have the North Koreans in charge of the whole world or the communists, like Stalin-style stuff? Would I rather have the Chinese in charge of the world? Would I rather have, flipping on the other side, going away from collectivism, would I rather have a um, – more of an individualist society? Would I rather have a, a really strong government, uh, I don't know, British folks in charge or the U.S.? Uh, who would I rather have in charge if I wasn't going to participate in this junk, but yeah, I do think one would be better than the other? Well, I'm thinking of all the countries. I am choosing to live in the United States. And that's kind of because the government in the United States is not as bad as many of the other governments to the citizens of the United States at this point. So things can change in a heartbeat. It wasn't the same. You know, the Japanese would probably be looking at me kind of strangely. The Japanese from 80 years ago who were put in in, uh, internment camps in the United States. If I was a person who was uh, being questioned at Guantanamo Bay and tortured, or not tortured, uh, enhancedly interrogatedly, um, if I was one of these folks, yeah, I probably wouldn't say things are completely lovely and the U.S. government's just kind and sweet. But I'm not moving. I can move anywhere I want to go, but I don't choose to. I'm, you know, thinking this is the best that currently exists. Now, it's the best that currently exists, but I think there could be much better. I, I'm not going to stop, you know, stop wanting government to go away and have a peaceful world. I'll, I'll keep working toward that. But I also think that the chances of my success, not just based on uh, the what percentage of 7 billion people are clamoring to hear the message offered on Shepherd Thinks. Um, I'm not talking about that. But, you know, if you look at it in grand, grand total, um, between Michael Malice and Larkin Rose and anybody who's even kind of sort of somewhat libertarianish, who one of the top uh, content producers, they're not getting a ton of people in some of the best quality. You know, people like Larkin or Patrick Smith on Disenthrall, we, they're not getting that many views. Like some brilliant minds putting out some brilliant stuff, and yeah, maybe at best they get a couple few hundred looking. But it's not like they're getting 5% of the world's population or 1% or a tenth of 1% or a thousandth of 1%, not even reaching those levels. So there's not the critical mass to, to have a person who's good at predicting things really truly think that there will be a, a change. So if I'm a pragmatic person, if I'm a stoic who believes do what's right, and uh, notice what it is you can change and what you can't change. And if there's something that you can change to make the world better for you and others, then do that. Well, would that be helping the U.S. government stay in control? Should I run for Congress or, or become a Marine Corpsman? Or should I become a, a flag waver? Should I do these things? I don't think so. Maybe it's just a, a it just doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> Uh, but it just it kind of seems disgusting to do any of that stuff. So, yeah, that, that's not my plan. But I do wonder when I hear mainstream people who don't understand voluntarism, but I hear a mainstream person asking that question. I don't have a good answer for them. If, if their question is, somebody's going to run the world, right? Yeah. Well, who would you rather have do it? The U.S. government or the Chinese government? Well, U.S. government. Well, what are you doing to help make that happen? If you think it's going to make it a better world, why aren't you doing that? What are you doing? Duck on it. I don't have a good answer. Now, I can say what it is that I, I really believe and what I've preached for years. What I've preached for years is if it's wrong to do something, like participate in government, then just don't do it. 
And regardless of how many good things, whatever the ends are, you just, you don't do that thing. It just, it ain't right, man. Don't do it. But then I'm, I'm faced with this, this quandary of why am I doing this? Is this just so that I feel good at my, about myself at night so I can sleep better? Or is it because it's going to change something in the long run? Like that's been my argument. If you, if you vote, then even if you get the better of two bad things in, at least it's better. At least you're getting whipped three times a day instead of four times a day. But you're supporting getting whipped. And if we all support getting whipped, then we'll always get whipped forever. Whereas if we start withdrawing and not agreeing to be whipped, then maybe in time we won't all be whipped. Now, regarding getting whipped, the pragmatic person is going to say, uh, well, wait a minute, are you really thinking that if you vote, oh, that's going to start changing things? Um, the, the whole world has just been waiting for Shepard to go cast a vote. And then once that happens, then everything will get straightened out. Because I do think that if I was a voter, I would vote very hard. And I think I would vote very well. I'd probably do it repeatedly each 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 game or season or whatever they call it. Like I would be a I'd be a hardcore voter, one of the best in the world. Um, but but it, do I really want to go do this? Maybe is it going to do some good? Well, no, of course it doesn't do any good. Um, so yeah, I, that ain't going to be happening. I I can't imagine. Well, then I start thinking. Well, if I really want to make some change in this world, what are maybe some of the better ways to do it? And I think about my pal Yaakov, and his argument is, don't preach liberty. Go out and create something wonderful, something new, something free market that beats the existing bad systems. And one of his, his examples is the idea of Waze when it first came out before Google got it. Uh, it it's this app that, for those of you who haven't used it, essentially you it's a mapping app. And you it's a crowdsourced thing. You drive past a cop. You push a little button that says, hey, there's a cop here. And everybody else slows down and doesn't get busted for speeding. And that has taken a lot of money out of the coffers of the bad guys. Uh, they're not able to fund themselves as well as they once could because of this app. Well, the people who started Waze, they weren't voluntarists. They don't know philosophy or liberty necessarily, as far as I know. But they did this thing because they were wonderful, greedy capitalist pigs. They wanted to create value and get some value in exchange for it. And so they did. And they made a bunch of money. and. They kept hundreds of millions, billions of dollars out of the government's coffers, and they helped people not be victimized uh, by speed cops, by traffic cops. So that could be the solution. Should I just go out and spend all of my energy starting up businesses and mentoring young people to start up businesses, finding liberty-loving folks and helping mentor them to start businesses? Well, the challenge with that is that we would love to. We're, we're all about that. My wife and I, she's the smart one. We're all about doing that. But how many people who are interested in liberty, in voluntarism, are actually like squared away solvent people? And these are my dear friends. <laughs> I I'm, don't mean to be rude, but you give me a hundred of my best libertarian voluntarist friends and you might find one or two who would be capable of starting a business, running a business, not getting interested in some conspiracy or some crystal butt plug or that's energy healing or uh, starting to capitalize their names or, or make sure they're not capitalized because some magic scribbles are better than other magic scribbles who actually go out and produce and are bringing in, I don't know, right now it's 2023. They're bringing in at least 50 or a hundred or 200 grand a year. How many people who are in our community are doing that? And unfortunately, not many. And how many are saying, oh, yeah, I don't mind working 14-hour days, seven days a week for the first five or ten years until I'm established. I'm willing to take advice. I'm willing to do the hard stuff. I'm willing to learn how to make cold calls and actually do it. Yeah, I don't I don't see, like, I, I wrote a book on harsh advice for the unemployed guy. Like, I'm trying to help people do the entrepreneurial thing. Now, that book didn't fly off the shelves, in part because I'm a bad writer, but I don't think there are a lot of people out there at a low level who are trying to help improve themselves. There are plenty of people out there with a net worth of 100000 or $5 million. They're trying to improve themselves, but the kind of person who has the oomph to do that has probably already made some money. And the people who don't have the oomph to do that have probably bought lots of self-help books. They probably haven't read them. They haven't really done the things that it takes. 
So I don't know that that's the step. I don't know that that's the way to to make this happen. Uh, I'm certainly going to encourage it. It's, it can't hurt. But I don't know that that's the big answer to solving all the ails, uh, all the problems. Uh, ails? That's not a good word, is it? Uh, ailments? What, what was I looking for? Ills. Ills, ails, something like that <laughs> of the world. Um, yeah, I don't think that's the, the perfect answer. It's going to help, but I don't think it's going to suddenly, three years from now, if we do that really well, we're going to have voluntarism in the world. I don't think so. You know, I guess a, a fair question to ask would be if there's, I, I keep saying these things, well, it's not going to fix everything. It's not going to make everything okay. What is it that I'm displeased with about the current uh, current place that we are in society, that we are as a civilization, that that this uh, this great nation has us in? Uh, what are my complaints? You know, I, I'm I have a pretty darn good life. What is it that I'm so worried about? And I guess a few of the things, the biggest thing would probably be taxation. You know, if I could just kind of go into the current system and start removing things, I think one of the th first things that I would remove would be taxation. Uh, I, I, I've never seen a different system work uh, for the same things that government does. Uh, so let's say law enforcement. I have never seen a system that doesn't have any law enforcement that has private security needs met by private security. And I haven't seen a place where there's no government to see what the roads would be like. All I've seen are examples of what it is that I think would be the best way, which is voluntarism. Uh, people having free market uh uh, free market decisions are what drives things. Having that as the system, um, that's what I believe would work. However, it's really easy for me to say that because if things, you know, six guys break into the room right now and I can't get to the gun, then uh, guess who I'm calling? Well, I wouldn't be able to. It's too small of a room, but you get what I'm saying. I would call cops as a last resort. So it's hard for me to, to think in a vacuum and say, okay, well, if there were no cops that I could call, would I then feel a lot safer and more secure? I'm in a, a town that I'm not, isn't my hometown. I don't have a network of friends and relatives here. Um, who would I call if there was a big problem? Would there be a DRO, a dispute resolution company? Could I just call State Farm or Allstate or whoever it was and say, hey, the, my room's getting broken into. Please send send the bunch of big, tough guys to save me. Uh, would that be a fast, good, reliable system? I, I don't know. I've never lived in a society where that has existed. So I guess my desire to get rid of taxes, I, I don't have a good argument as to, well, here's, here's where it's worked. Um, I would have the same argument that the Wright brothers had before they flew an airplane or before uh, when, you know, women have been beaten by their spouses for, hundreds, thousands of years. And over the last 50 years, there's been a big decrease in it. And I, I couldn't have answered the question beforehand. Well, without beating your wife, how would you get her to have you know dinner on the table at five o'clock and have it hot? Um, I, I, I don't know the answers to that. Um, I don't know the answers how to get every single thing done. I do know that it's wrong to initiate violence against another person. It's wrong to beat your wife because dinner is not on the table. I, I know that that's wrong. Um, I, I don't know how to solve every single problem. I do think, though, that if it's something that's on my mind, like something that was on my mind when I came into this town for a couple of days of ATVing, I love it around here, something was on my mind was I wanted a hotel that had internet speeds that, that weren't quality and speed. In other words, I wanted it to be this century type speeds. I wanted at least eight or 10 megabytes per second. And I wanted a comfortable hotel room. Didn't have to be luxurious, but I didn't want it to stink and have blood on the carpet and noisy meth heads going in and out next door. I wanted a little bit nicer place. And it just so happens that dozens of companies came together to make this happen for me. And there was TripAdvisor trying to get me to use them, but they're kind of a piece of crap. So I don't use them. 
And I was looking at Google. Well, they're not perfect either. But I'm looking at Google and I'm, I'm kind of decide on the hotel I want. And I look at it. It's number one in the area. It's rated. And so there are a lot of different companies who are offering different rates. And they were all within 30 bucks of each other per night. Uh, but I was able to pick one and make my deal. All these people, just this, these companies just burst onto the scene to help me solve my need. And I, and I just really am persuaded, I'm convinced that, that if my other need was protection and there wasn't a backup source, I didn't have a backup for housing coming to town here. I, I didn't have a backup. So I had to think it, think it out, plan ahead and make it happen for myself. I think that there would be a solution. Uh, I really think that the free market would produce that solution. So I, I don't think taxation is necessary. I, even if it was, it's not morally acceptable. It's it's taking money away from people against their will to do what the rest of y'all think needs to be done. And that's that's just, that's wrong. And the biggest argument I get, it's, it's incredible. I get this argument from people still. Uh, what's your argument for why taxation is not theft? And they say, well, Taxes, you know, the money we get from taxes are spent on a lot of important things. That's not an argument. You, you can't just say, how is it not stealing to take money? Oh, well, it's not stealing because I like how the money is spent. Well, no, it's still stealing. Maybe it's acceptable in your worldview, but don't pretend like it's not stealing. So, so yeah, taxation, that, that's my big one. I think without taxation, so many things would go away. Um, another one would be the the bureaucracy of, of trying to solve all of society's problems, um, trying to provide schooling, trying to provide roads, trying to provide protection, trying to provide fire service, trying to provide all these things that government does poorly. It's, it comes from this attitude that the free market couldn't hack it. Well, I think the free market could. Anything that the government's not involved in, like hot dog stands. If you want a hot dog, you can go get a hot dog. There's a grocery store that'll sell them to you. There are a lot of restaurants that'll sell them to you. There are little hot dog stands that'll sell them to you. And that's that's just what happens. Uh, what else might you need? Oh, you might need your your lawn mowed and your, your pool cleaned. And well, there are free market people to do that for you. Well, you might need this or that. Everything you think of, the free market provides, except for the areas that government has a monopoly. So I, I think that's something that I, I don't like about our system. I know it's something I don't like about our system is, is this idea that the government jumps in to solve problems. And that's giving them the benefit of the doubt. That's, that's pretending that they have good intentions and that they just want to help and they see there are some problems and they, they jump in to do it. Uh, yeah, I, I wish that was gone. <laughs> Another thing that I would like to see gone it would be the planning of people's lives, the central planning. Um, the, the fact that government looks at, at studies, or they have their, their scientists do this, their, their professors, but, but they'll look at something and they'll say, well, what do most middle-aged guys die from? Diabetes, uh, heart attacks, whatever. Well, then they, they backtrack it and they centrally plan how I ought to live my life so that I don't go get a half a dozen wings and a steak and a beer and a baked potato and then come back to the hotel room and have some beers. They try to organize my life in such a way that that doesn't happen because they want to protect me from that. They're encouraging this, this plant-based diet thing. And it, it's healthier if, if you don't enjoy eating good food. It is way healthier. I, I strongly suggest it. I remember as a kid, these Seventh Day Adventists, a lot of them was a lot of uh, the, those folks are vegetarians, not full vegans, but vegetarians. And a bunch of them living to be 90 and 100. Um, that's I, anecdotal evidence. But yeah, I think it's, it's healthy to eat a plant based diet and, you know, maybe have a couple pieces of chicken a week or something and fish, but not eating big, heavy, cal caloric steaks unless you're working out really hard either on the ranch or as a lumberjack or in the gym or something but for for most of us who have somewhat sedentary lifestyles and it's probably better for us not to do that but i don't like the central planning 
I don't like them coming in and saying, we can't do that. I don't like them saying, um, well, we need the residences to be in this part of the, the town and then the industrial park over here and the farms on the downwind side. And, and I like some of the results, some of it, some of it, you know, if I was designing my own city, I'd make a lot of similar decisions. I'd say, yeah, let's, let's have somebody come out and make sure that the septic tank is buried deeply enough and that there's enough space for the, the SEP field or whatever it's called, um, perk, <laughs> perk field, uh, make sure there's enough area for the, the crap to drain off. I mean, that makes, that's smart. That makes sense. Uh, let's make sure, you know, a bunch of houses that burn down, it's because of faulty electrical issues. Well, let's have the county come out and do an inspection and have a government employee who couldn't hack it as a real electrician, have them come out and do the inspection. You know, a lot of these ideas, they kind of they kind of sound good on the one side, but they're not necessary. They, they, they soften us as humans. We don't need a mommy and daddy for our whole lives to hover over us like a helicopter, making sure every single thing we do is, is best or right or good or smart according to them. It's just, it's, it's not how I want to live. I, I guess if you're not, you don't have that sense of, of freedom, you don't have that passion or that desire to be free, then I guess it wouldn't apply to you. But to me, for, for, for me, my, my personal choice that freedom is so important. I, I made some bad decisions tonight on what I put into my body. And I'm overweight because I made a lot of those decisions in the past. But if the alternative was me being controlled, having a muzzle on that the government would open in order to feed me Brussels spout infused tofu or whatever, I don't think that's my better option. I know I'm going to die younger than I would if I had a healthy lifestyle, but it's, it's my doggone choice. It's, it's up to me to make that choice. And it's up to you to make the choices you make. And some of them are going to be good. Some of them are going to be bad, but we all ought to be able to make our choices. So those are just a, a quick rundown of some of the things that I, I wish was different. And I could go on and on about education and central banking, a huge one. And I could go on and on, but those, those three are, are, are almost enough, even without all the other things. And, and, and by the way, central banking is probably bigger than most of those. Um, but if we got rid of taxation, that would get rid of a lot of things like war. Well, I don't have to talk about war because we got rid of it. We didn't have taxation. If you just took up a collection plate, you wouldn't collect enough to have war. Uh, the Christian conservatives would pitch in a lot to kill Arabs and, you know, people, you know, smaller, shorter, darker skinned people from around the world uh, who are kind of selfish, greedy people who were born on places that has U.S. oil under their feet. Um, there will be some people that would ship in for that, but I don't think it would be to the extent that it would allow these multi-million dollar airplanes to be built to go bomb these people. Uh, I think if it was on a donation system, uh, that wouldn't happen. And there are a lot of things that if the government wasn't funded, then they might wither up and go away. I know that's wishful thinking, but I think that could happen. I probably ought to mention a problem that I think that is a, a pretty big one. I really think that most people are apathetic and I shouldn't use the word stupid um, or obtuse or maybe ignorant is a better word, but I really think that in the hotel that I am right now, if I walked out and knocked on all the doors, rousted people from the street. If I got a hundred people together, of all of those people, if I ask them serious questions of import, they're not going to have any answers. Like if I if I said to them, "What do you think about the war?" Then now, late October 2023, I think that they would give the correct answers that they heard on the news. They would say, well, Israel is in the right and Ukraine is in the right. And I'd say, oh, really? So you've done some study on this. Well, you darn right I have. I watch the news and the news has told me which side I'm supposed to root for. Matter of fact, I ordered a bumper sticker, the yellow and blue one. Well, they're definitely in the right. Really? Are they? And then the whole thing in the Israeli-Palestine uh, issue. Um, there are some interesting arguments on both sides, but how many of those hundred people who I ask, well, so you, you really feel strongly that, that 
Israel is in the right. The, the government that runs the Israeli people, the Jewish people, that government is the one that is, is correct. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I can appreciate you've done your research and you know that. Will you give me the three reasons that you think that they are right? And then would you also please give me the three best arguments, they don't win, but the three best arguments you've heard for why the Arabs are right? People are going to have no clue. They don't know the intricacies. I mean, forget about them trying to, to get down deep and say and realize that it's not a government-government thing. It's an individual thing. Who is the highest owner of that property? Who has the, the best pedigree or the best uh, history of property rights? Who's it been? Who, who has the longest, uh, I don't know what the right word is, not lineage, but if somebody can show that your grandpa bought it from so-and-so and then that person legally acquired it and peacefully acquired it from somebody else and it was rightfully acquired by, back and forth and whoever has the best proof of that, that person is who should get that hunk of property. And it shouldn't be a matter of which government is going to come in and bomb the other government or tax you or institute their favorite religion. Well, no, you get to be whatever religion you want. And chances are, if you did that, you went way back and you looked at good humanitarian, libertarian, whatever you want to call it, law and best practices, you'd find that there'd be a lot of Jewish people and you'd find that there'd be a lot of Arabs. And if they didn't like living around each other, and I, I guess they could sell and move away. But you don't need governments fighting each other over this. I don't expect these hundred people who have rounded up in the around here and I'm polling them, I don't expect them to have that correct answer. It's sad that they wouldn't, or at least five or 10 of them wouldn't say, well, you know, here's a thought. They wouldn't think of that. It would all be the same, same, same. And that's very disappointing. Even if 1%, even if we got lucky and one out of those 100 people was a deep thinker who didn't just watch the news to be told what to think about stuff, but they really were a thinker, that's not going to help much. What if five out of those 100 were? Maybe that'll make a little ripple, but it would take more to really make a change in the world. And that's kind of going back to the whole pondering that I'm doing in this video. Why, why is it that I'm here? What is it that I think I'm accomplishing? Do I really think I can get 5% of the U.S. population to thoughtfully consider philosophy and, and either tell me why I'm wrong, have a good argument for it, a, a reason-based argument, or agree with me? Can I really get 5%? Hell no. What about 1%? Hell no. Like I, I, I'm getting so few people's lives who I'm, I'm being able to reach out and touch their ears for a moment. I, I'm not making a noticeable material difference. And it's very saddening. And it, and it occurs to me that stupid people, at least that's something we can all agree upon. The eugenics people, they agree. Uh, the government agrees. Yeah, most people are stupid. That's why we have to exist in order to, you know, keep them from killing each other and help them figure out where to live and not to breed too much and blah, blah, blah. We got to figure all this stuff out. I think just about all people who are, I don't know, either smart or reached a high level of thinking about things have come to the conclusion most people are are dumb or apathetic or or something like that. And that's sad. It's sad, but I don't I don't think I'm wrong. And, and when I say dumb or apathetic, I don't I don't know if dumb is the right word. I, I don't know that I have a, a correct word for it. I think there are a lot of people who have bachelor's and master's degrees and doctorates, postdoctorates, who have, have been through the system. They've they've had a lot of stuff go into their brains. They can beat me in their, their specific fields of study. Uh, you know, if they, you ask me about photosynthesis and then you ask the, the botanist, is that who would do that? Uh, you ask that person, well, that scientist is going to know more than I do. And, and you ask the attorney, they're going to know more about legal stuff than I do. But if you ask some basic life questions, like, hey, what do you reckon a good, just make it real short, just think about it for a few minutes and tell me what do you think a good system would be if a plane crashes on an island and there are 250 survivors, and what do you think some good basic things that people ought to agree upon? How ought it to go? What rights should people have? And what shouldn't people do to each other? And 
I, I don't think people have thought through this. I don't think they would be capable of it. These are high IQ people, but they don't think about these important issues. That saddens me. That really saddens me. I actually have a request of you. If you would be willing to do this, if you would go into the um, into my YouTube channel, which is probably where you are right now, and under the community tab right here, if you would click on that, I have several polls that I've put out over the last couple of days. They're really short, just kind of asking what kind of content, what kind of length, any other advice you have for this channel. If you would be willing to go on there and do that, um, that would really help me kind of decide on my direction. And if I see two people have responded, that tells me a lot right there. Uh, if I see hundreds of people begging for a certain kind of content, eh, that tells me something too. Um, speaking of this, uh, my YouTube channel, if you do have interest in particular things, some of the uh, different uh, playlists that I have are, uh, this is one I just started, is Humanitarian Legends, and I'm using uh, my virtual assistant in the Philippines to help me with this, and I'm using ChatGPT to help. And kind of the, the three of us are working on this project together. And I'm going to list a number of um, libertarian slash humanitarian legends and just give a short description of them. So that's what this channel is about. A good way to live. This, uh, this playlist is just kind of general life advice. Hey, be honest, work hard, that kind of thing. Uh, things that you know, I, I used to think that everybody was taught this as a child and and had this deep, innate uh, knowledge of this, but I don't think everyone does. As I've lived life, I've come across some people who who I, I've kind of realized, you know what, you were probably never taught to thank someone when they do something nice for you. You were probably never taught that if you come across somebody who is hard of hearing to speak clearly and distinctly and at a volume that they can understand you, that it's rude to do otherwise. There are just a lot of tips like that in this uh, playlist. Logic, reason, philosophy, and economic theory. That's kind of the main thing that I've done thus far. Um, this is all the voluntarist, stoic, humanitarian type of work. Um, every so often I'll do a spoof or satire. I put that under humor. Um, I'm trying to do a number of shorts because uh, YouTube likes those. And uh, hopefully you do too. Uh, I put those out every so often. Logical fallacies. Uh, this is a series that I'm doing. I'm probably a third of the way done. I've taken a little break, but uh, just short little segments talking about various logical fallacies. And, and I find them in a number of places. I find that Bo Bennett's book, uh, 300 Logical Fallacies, is a, is a great place. I'm kind of using that as a base for some of them. Um, what are some of the other better, uh, yeah, business tips by Shepard. This is a, uh, a good playlist. I, I think of things every so often and add them here. Not many things on there. Uh, propaganda. Some of this is my own, uh, work. Some of the p things in this playlist are other videos that I've seen that are pretty good, uh, that I suggest to check out. Let's think show for about 12 weeks. I had a radio show. Uh, and this is, this is kind of a, the podcast version of those. Um, eh, let's see sustainability over here on the far right. I have uh, some interest in this because I think that the whole, uh, United Nations sustainability movement is the foundation for a lot of bad decisions and problems and things that are happening. So I, I talk about that some, um, yeah, so that those are primarily the, uh, the playlist that I have. Uh, I, of course, I'm always open to feedback as to which ones you like more or less, what I should do more content. And that's kind of what this, uh, this community request is to, to do some of these uh, polls that I have been putting on here in the last few days. So if you go on and answer a few of those, that would be awesome help. Thank you for that. Now, here's another crazy thought that, I mean, there's no chance it could be an actual thing, but yeah, what if? Um, what if I'm wrong? <laughs> what if all the books I've read and podcasts and lectures and videos and all this content that I've consumed over the last 15 years, a little bit more than that, that I've been a voluntarist, what if all of this stuff that I think I know, I'm just in my little bubble, I'm in my little information landscape and I'm only getting information from people who I like, who agree with me, 
and I have this strong bias, and even when I try to sit down, well, no, I'm carefully analyzing it. Well, you don't think the liberals and conservatives and the, the Nazis and the communists are also with a good heart genuinely considering their stuff? Of course they are. They just come up with the wrong conclusions. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Am I really so egotistical that I think that I couldn't be wrong? No, of course I could be wrong. Um, I don't think I am, but then again, neither does anybody. Well, none of us think we're wrong, those of us who think about important things of the world. Um, but obviously, 80, 90% of us are wrong, generally. Um, did I just really get lucky that I fell into the right crowd of the people who get it all right? There are a lot of people sitting around bars who think that, you know, we conservatives who have our... Um, I love freedom and don't tread on me. And I have my, uh, what's the, the flag with the colors that when cops beat their wives, they turn uh, black and blue, the black and blue U.S. government flags. They have those and they're talking about how they love their freedom and they hate the government and they love law enforcement. Um, it's easy for me to mock them and say that they're wrong. They think I'm wrong. Um, I don't know who's right. I, I, I still think I am, but eh. I don't know. I have a good dose of uh, humility that I'm going to keep thinking, and I'm looking forward to being proven wrong on things. But even though I think I'm in a good place, I could be wrong about a few things. So in summary, uh, I guess the plan is for now, for the rest of this year, I'm committed to uh, releasing a new video every Saturday at 6. And uh, I'm going to continue at least weekly uh, releasing these videos. Uh, for the rest of this year. And then we will see. I want to see after this video what your feedback is. Uh, I, again, I would really appreciate it if you would go to the uh, YouTube community and uh, vote in those polls that I put up and uh, let me know what you think there. Write comments, contact me personally, whatever, with any advice or man, just thoughts you have. And I'm going to put all of that together and keep pondering it and see where we'll go from here. Uh, it, it's sure been a fun ride. I think it'll continue in one way or another uh, into the future. A uh, big thanks to all of you who have done things to support this channel. Uh, for those of you who have shared my videos with someone, or who have watched them, or who have liked the video, who have subscribed, who have just tried to spread word of voluntarism, uh, and this video is particular, particularly about my channel, but yeah, thanks for spreading voluntarism. It's, I think, going to make the world a better place, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think about the future, and uh We'll see what happens.